In our previous lectures, we understood how to find the time complexity of independent nested loops. We understood what are independent nested loops and how to find their time complexities. We discussed a lot of examples to understand this in our previous lectures. Now, from this lecture onwards, we will understand what are dependent nested loops and how to find the time complexity of dependent nested loops. So, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is Dependent Nested Loops Introduction. First, I will explain what are dependent nested loops and then after understanding what are dependent nested loops, we will proceed with an example to properly understand how to find the time complexity of dependent nested loops. Let's get started with the first topic, Dependent Nested Loops Introduction. There are two types of nested loops. One is Independent Nested Loop and the second one is Dependent Nested Loop. We learned what are independent nested loops in our previous lectures. Now our focus is on dependent nested loops. Let's try to understand what is a dependent nested loop. So what is a dependent nested loop? Dependent nested loop is a type of nested loop in which inner loop variable depends on the outer loop variable. This means inner loop variable which belongs to the inner loop depends on the outer loop variable which belongs to the outer loop. So, dependent nested loop is different from independent nested loop because in case of independent nested loop, we learned that inner loop variable is always independent of the outer loop variable. That is why the nested loop is called independent nested loop. While on the other hand, dependent nested loop is called dependent nested loop because inner loop variable depends on the outer loop variable. So, this is the difference between independent nested loop and dependent nested loop. Now we know what are dependent nested loops, but how do we find the time complexity of dependent nested loops? In case of independent nested loops, finding the time complexity is pretty easy. We can simply multiply the frequency count of each loop in the independent nested loop and this will give us the time complexity of the entire independent nested loop. But in case of dependent nested loop, we do not have this liberty. We cannot simply multiply the frequency count of each loop of the dependent nested loop. This will not give us the correct time complexity. In order to find the time complexity of dependent nested loop, the way is little different from the independent nested loop. In case of independent nested loop, we learned two ways to find the time complexity. We learned in way number one that in order to find the time complexity of the independent nested loop, we can calculate the frequency count of the inner loop and then we can calculate the frequency count of the entire nested loop. Instead of doing this, we can multiply the frequency count of each loop of the independent nested loop. This also gives the time complexity of the independent nested loop and this is the easiest approach. But in case of dependent nested loop, we cannot do this. There is only one way to find the time complexity of dependent nested loop. Let's now learn how to find the time complexity of dependent nested loop with the help of an example. So now let's move to the example of a dependent nested loop and let's understand how to find its time complexity. Here is the simple example. It can be observed that this structure is a nested loop structure because this for loop belongs to this for loop or in other words, this for loop is within this for loop. This is what we learned about nested loops in our previous lectures. We understood that a nested loop is a loop 
in which one loop is within another loop. This for loop is within another for loop, that's why this structure is a nested loop structure. Also, this is a dependent loop structure because the loop variable of this for loop, which is j, depends on the loop variable of this for loop, which is i. We can observe in one of these statements, variable i is used. In this for loop, the first statement is j equal to 1. Here we are not using variable i. In the second statement also, we are not using variable i. This is the conditional statement j less than or equal to n. The last statement is the update statement. And in this statement, we are using the variable i. So, clearly variable j is dependent on the variable i. Hence, we can say, this structure is the dependent nested loop structure. Now we know this structure is the dependent nested loop structure. Let's try to find its time complexity. How do we find the time complexity of these type of loops? In order to find the time complexity, we need to analyze the behavior of the inner loop for each iteration of the outer loop. Now, let's do the analysis. The initial value of i is 1. So, in the iteration number 1, the value of i is 1. i is compared with n. Let's say 1 is less than n. Therefore, the condition is satisfied. Because the condition is satisfied, the inner for loop will execute. This loop will complete its execution. And after this, the variable i is incremented by 1. So, in the first iteration, the value of i is 1 and the inner for loop looks like this. In the update statement, we now have j equal to j plus 1 in place of j equal to j plus i. Because i is 1, therefore, we can replace i by 1 here as well. So, the update statement is j equal to j plus 1. This is equivalent to j++. And we can observe, j is initialized to 1, j is compared with n, and j is incremented by 1. So clearly this loop will run n times. Because every time we are incrementing j by 1 only. And the loop will run n times because there are a total of n iterations. j will receive values from 1 to n. That is why this loop will run n times. And hence the frequency count of this inner loop for i equal to 1 is n. Now in the second iteration, i is incremented by 1. i becomes 2. 2 is compared with n. Is 2 less than n? Let's assume 2 is less than n. Therefore, the condition is satisfied. Once again, the inner loop will execute. This time in place of i, we now have 2. So, for i equal to 2, the inner loop looks like this. This time the update statement is j equal to j plus 2. Now, what do you think? How many times this loop will run? j is initialized to 1, j is compared with n, and j is updated to j plus 2. Recall what we learned in one of our lectures. We learned how to find the time complexity of a single loop where in the update expression or statement, the variable is incremented by a constant. There we learned how to find the time complexity of these type of loops. The frequency count of this loop is n by 2. This is an approximate value, although we learned in our lecture that the frequency count must be n minus 1 by 2 plus 1. For the sake of simplification, I'm assuming n by 2. Eventually, we want the time complexity in asymptotic notation. Therefore, we can eliminate some constants. By eliminating minus 1 from the numerator and then plus 1, we are just simplifying the calculation. The difference will be constant. So, it will not impact much to the time complexity. Hence, I am assuming for the sake of simplification, 
that this loop will run n by 2 times. And here I am getting 2 because the constant in this update statement is 2. So, whatever the constant we have here, it will come in the denominator. So, this loop will run n by 2 times. Now, what happens for i equal to 3? The update statement will be j equal to j plus 3. And therefore, the loop will run n by 3 times. In this way, we can continue up to i equal to n. This is the last value of i for which this condition is true. For i equal to n, the inner loop looks like this. In place of i, now we have n. And we know how many times this loop will run. This loop will run n by n times. Therefore, the frequency count of this loop is n by n. So, for i equal to 1, the inner loop runs n times. For i equal to 2, the inner loop runs n by 2 times. For i equal to 3, the inner loop runs n by 3 times. And this will continue up to i equal to n, for which the inner loop runs n by n times. Now we need to add all the frequency counts of the inner for loop to obtain the time complexity of this entire loop structure. So the total is n plus n by 2 plus n by 3 and so on up to n by n. This will give us the total frequency count of this entire loop structure and then we can represent it using the asymptotic notation. And this will give us the time complexity. We can take n common from the numerator. This will give us n times 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus and so on up to 1 by n. When we discussed commonly used logarithms and summations, there we learned this summation is equal to log n. So this sum is equal to log n and here we have n. So, now we need to multiply n by log n. This will give us n times log n. And therefore, the time complexity of this loop structure is theta of n log n. So, the time complexity is theta of n log n. I hope it is clear what's the time complexity. So, with this we learned how to find the time complexity of these type of loops. We are done with the example and this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.